I watch people get miracles. Since I watch people puke up cancers, I held two boxes in my hand both sides in Chicago and watched two people puke up cancers right before my eyes. And some people sit there and wonder what that was, what was going on. People don't realize that Jesus Christ is the same today, yesterday, and He will be forever. And if He is the same yesterday and today, that means that whatever you come for today, God can give it to you. God's still on His way. How long have you been with Red's ministry? Over 25 years. 25 years. And He has had miracles happen in his life. One of them was that both Rev and myself warned him that things were going to be okay because of something that was happening here. He was going to have a heart surgery and scared him half to death because when you're facing somebody else taking and opening up your chest and taking your heart and putting it on your chest and having the experience to do everything, wire it back together, put it back together, and then you come out of it, that's, that's uh, having a lot of faith in whoever's doing it you don't know because you're out. But this is something that happened during the revival. And I want you to go ahead and tell what happened. When I had that heart surgery, I have to tell you, I was one of the first ones in Riverside Hospital that had that. And that's when they did lay the heart out of your chest. They had chest open, put it outside, operated on it, put it back in. And hopefully you were still moving. The second day I was up walking. And it's been, uh, things have been going well. And uh, since that surgery, uh, they said I should be good for about 10 years. And I'm on my 15th or 16th year. So I'm going to say They're starting to feel some of the problems. Shortness of breath and waking up in the middle of the night. My heart didn't seem to be pumping correctly. And so I went to the doctors, and the doctor was concerned. So he sent me to a clinic where you have to take three tests. The last one is a nuclear test. I did one. Where they inject it. I don't know what it's like. Nuclear radiation. Die of some sort. Tom Fair, whatever they call it. So, I don't know. Anyhow, uh, I went through the three tests and I thought I wasn't going to make it through one of them, but I did. Friday night, this last week, two weeks ago. Reverend uh, Curry was here. They advised me to take her. He was here. I have to mention that Bob, the week before, put his hands on my chest and I knew what he was praying for. And Kate came up to me and walked up to me and he said, Put your hands on your chest. And he says, You're going to be fine. I haven't had a pain since. Saturday night after I get ready, I get a letter in the mail from the clinic. And the clinic said there's been no changes since you had your surgery back over 10, 15 years ago. Because everything's going to be okay and as far as we know, we're going to be fine. And that's a real Is that good or bad? It's not the way I want it. You're losing weight. I can see it in your face, facial. Where are they doing the man? Here? But then they done any x-ray in here? None at all. Have you noticed some problems here? Put your hand right, right there. And your glasses. Take this one. You don't really want them to find anything anyway, do you? Okay, so be it. stomach. There's like an air pocket. 
it's about that big. And it's pushing belches up. I saw that in the spirit. Didn't know what it was, but I saw it. There's a blockage in the back of your eye. It's a, a little bit bigger than a pinhead. That's what's blocking the vision. Yes. Do you, do you feel like there's a little, I don't know how to describe it, like a little, uh, not a knot, it's about the size of one of those things right there. On the back of your eye, right here. I was told that about the right there is the it's, it's touch, but I don't know, they don't like to talk about it for some reason. The doctor said it's detached, and I'm going to ask God to retach. Yes. 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 You see, the devil knows that if he can take any one of God's servants and put them on their back, that it will cause people that they were influenced to believe to wonder. But if God turns around and heals that person, it makes those people's faith come even more alive because they know if He did it for him, He certainly can do it for you. And never give up. And never give in. Because if you give up, you'll never know what the next day has for you. You preached that sermon before, brother. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Never give up. that we have so much burdens and so many heartaches and so many pains and so many setbacks and so many broken promises that we just wonder if God really cares. And we wonder if God is really out there listening. Every one of us in here have had angels assigned to us to keep us, to watch over us, and even bless us. And the important thing is that you realize that you are God's property. And if you belong to God, then it's His responsibility to heal you. But it's your responsibility to have faith to believe He will. You hear what I said? Amen. You know, last week, we thought this little baby was dying. She got stung by a bee. She ate the bee. She swallowed all over. And we thought she was dying for sure. But you know, Sunday when I brought her up here and Bob prayed for her, she can run around, she can do anything now, she can jump. And I just thank God because she can't talk, but I'm gonna talk for her. Amen. I, if you would have seen her, we paid a lot of attention to her. Because you know that's our little baby. But I thank God that he listened to Bob. Bob. It's getting a great work to be done here in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> Have you went to the doctor about that? Pardon me? Can you lift your arm completely straight up? You have no problems? Okay. That's kind of like a sciatic nerve. You know what I'm saying? I have these two fingers right here are numb from my elbow to here. They go to sleep. I have the same, feels like little pins sticking in there.
sure did. Now do this. Amen. Now you'll be able to handle that stick. <laughs> God bless you, brother. Praise God, everybody. Oh, and so delighted to be here with you today. Yes. I've been knowing, uh, I knew him when he was an usher for me, boy Jenkins, years and years and years ago. I know that he used to play for A.A. Allen. I come out of all those big ministries and those great healing services. This is my brother that's blind, but now he sees.
For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that are drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and of love, and for the helmet of salvation and the hope of salvation. For the helmet and the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but obtained salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wait or sleep, we should live together with Him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another instead of destroy, tear down, and kill one another. Edify, even as also ye do. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. And to esteem them very highly in love for their work, for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. All the signs of the seasons, the things God warns us of, the things, and yet if we're not in tune in the spirit, we can't put these pieces together to see what's taking place around. For an example, and I've mentioned this several times that the knowledge before the return of Christ, the knowledge would be upon an increase. And take a look back and see how knowledge has taken increase over these past few years, the technology that's taken place. When we were saved, sis, and we came to the Lord, you've probably heard this like I heard it, Jesus could come at any time, and I've said this, He can't. Because all of it has not been put in place yet. Everything has to be intact. The satellite wasn't in the air. The TV wasn't available. And then if it was, it was called the one-eyed demon. And then you had the website, internet, and all the technology that we have today. And the whole world is following into this. And it's all part of God's plan so that everybody will have an opportunity to see. I remember Reverend Jacob saying this one time. And I've had people say and argue with me that, well, there's a lot of people who haven't seen or heard. But I remember Reverend was supposed to have a crusade down in Florida. And the newspaper re refused to advertise his revival. And he put up this huge tent. And he was kind of upset because they spent several thousand dollars getting everything there and getting set up and so forth and then they couldn't advertise to let people know he was there and he said God he said what am I going to do and God said tend to your business and I'll tend to mine and God turned around and told him I will I will do a work in your ministry supernatural and what the supernatural was is that day that needed to be there People turned on their favorite TV show. But that show wasn't there. Reverend Jenkins appeared on that show and invited them to the tent revival. God put his face in place of what they were watching. And that tent filled up. In these latter days, there are going to be more supernatural signs. There's going to be more disasters than ever before. I said this, I've, I've been looking over my prophecies, and I normally don't do that because I, it's not me, it's God, but I've been looking over the prophecies I gave in the last two New Years, and it's frightening to see how down to precise points that God has used those prophecies and brought them to pass. Reverend Jenkins said, I have to watch what I say, watch what I do, watch what I think, because it happens. And there is places in the elements of God that you can give where things like that can happen. You have to be very cautious of what you think about somebody. That somebody would be like Paul that was killing the church, the church members, and putting them in prison and so forth. But yet God's purpose for Paul's life was that he was a chosen vessel but had not come to the knowledge of it. And I can, I can imagine me sitting there and here Chris 
fought the church through rocks and people, had people go disrupt services and so forth and so forth. And I'm sitting there wanting to just jerk a knot in his head. And God said, don't touch him. He's my anointed. Amen. And then he comes over to our side and he starts preaching. And I'm going to sit there and wonder if it's real. See, when you find something that's real, and I don't know anybody that can prove that they're the reality in serving God more than my pastor. And I've watched a bunch of them. The ones that could are dead and gone. And he's one of the last here. And his time is very short. He knows it. He has a one hour message that he has to preach to the whole world. And God's preparing him for that. That's how close our time is. If we're going to do anything, says for God, we better get it done quick. We better go into the byways and highways and compel people to come before it is too late. If you had the only house on the block that was standing and all the rest of them were blown away, would you refuse those people to need home? Would you refuse them not to be able to come to safety? You have the ark of safety with you. That's Jesus Christ. And you need to go and you compel them to come. Yes, I like to come to church and I like to see people bouncing off the walls and doing flips and shouting and praising God. But when you leave here, that shout, Norman's going to be knocked out of you because as soon as you get home, the devil's going to have some disasters there for you. And you're going to sit there and say, where did God go? Well, he's back in that church. You better come back there and get it. Stay with it. Yeah. But we're living in that time and we're living in a time of of dangerous times and whatever we're going to do for God we must get it done quickly 